Uh, management, of course, a big issue for all sorts of companies. But this month, Fortune magazine highlighting Jack Welch's online MBA program and how it's changing the game for education in the world of management. Jack Welch is here with us, of course. In the article, we should tell you, Jack says, quote, most business schools are disconnected from best business practices. It's not that they don't teach them, they just don't practice them. And so I thought we could start our conversation by asking, what do you mean by that? Well, let's take, for example, uh, customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Who do you think the customer is in most of these fat, fan, fancy MBA programs? The faculty, <laughs> OK? I mean, the faculty and the dean, they work together, do all the, the student comes in and pays the fees, and they, and they try and give it an education, and they do. But for example, let's take our school. The student is the customer. That's why we're growing 40% a year. And, and then that's why our students are, are rating it as the best investment they ever made. I mean, crazy stuff. Because the students are telling us every quarter we measure the MPS. Our MPS score in this Jack Welch Management Institute is 77. That number is better than Apple, better than Amazon. It's up there with Costco. Um, one of the questions, and we were talking about during the commercial break, but we had Fred Wilson in here earlier this week. He made the argument to some degree that some of these type of degrees, business degrees, for example, an MBA, not necessary. You might have needed that 20, 30 years ago if you were going to get into venture capital or investment bank or any of these, these businesses. But maybe today, um, both because of the cost and because of the requirements. His problem was with traditional MBAs in particular. Uh, yeah, well, I say in, the, in this article, right. if you want to go to Wall Street and play with the derivatives, that school is it. But let's take, for example, what, why, why you need a practical education that teaches you about mission and values and where you're going, how to appraise people, how to hire, how to fire, how to motivate. Let's take Homeland Security, for example. Okay. We have, let's say uh, we're all sitting here and we're headhunters. Mm -hmm. Let's say we got a, a $60 billion enterprise budget Expense by, by, by budget. We got 240,000 employees. It's a pretty big business. Let's go out and find a lawyer, okay? Let's go out and find a lawyer that's never run anything. Now, this guy may be the smartest guy in the world, Jay Johnson. He doesn't know anything about metrics, measuring each guy coming through the gate in the Homeland Security. The government is screwed up. They hire a, a, a Obama bundler who may be smart, to run an organization like this, one of our MBAs could run it better than that. Because we're, we're asked, what it, people say, for example, what does it matter if the, if the president said ISIS, or not say ISIS is an is a, uh, Islamic terrorist organization? Because when no one say Islam is a bad, re wait, right. a re bad religion, it's a strain that's bad. Right. If you were running a business, you would say, what is the mission of Homeland Security? Uh, first of all, the whole, the whole country. You'd say, we've got to get rid of ISIS. We must get the scourge out. That mission statement then says how. Every one of us in every division all the way down has got to make every decision based on that mission. Uh, is what I'm doing today going to get rid of that scourge, or is it? For example, climate warming isn't going to get rid of that scourge. So you end up focusing on what the troubles are. That's what a, man, that's what a business school does. It teaches you how to set the mission, where you're going, how, how you're going to get there. This is not a criticism of Jay Johnson. Right. You can go through all kinds. We appoint these people to run these I'll tell you what I, what I got out of, of reading that thing, Jack, and it, it was sort of a... a a, you know, an enlightening moment for me. I thought people, now, I, you know, I think anyone that wants to succeed in business should get a degree in molecular biology, hopefully right. a master's. So I a think PhD that's, in engineering. You know, but, so I've never, I, I have no business, I took one business, might have been economics or something. But I read that, and I always thought that you got an MBA from like Wharton or Harvard, and then you go into some big company where you say, well, I've got my MBA, and, and it's just sort of uh, almost something you put on the wall. You thought of it, it as consulting. 
Right. I mean, what you say there is, let's say most of these people that get an MBA are starting a small business. And then I thought, wow, what if I had to start a small business? I would have no idea how to start a small business. And maybe, you know, we're doing something, uh, my wife No, and they're I, getting promoted in, in an existing company. The average age is 38. But also, they're learning starting the business. business. But I, was, I wonder, do you, you were always in a big company. Would you know how to start from what you I learned at I started a plastics business. I was the at first GE. employee. At GE. I, I, now, I had the lucky break of having a bank, GE, sitting over me, but I was the first employee, I had the first technician, and we built a plastics business. Most nothing. entrepreneurs fail, and most small businesses fail. If you have a Jack Welch MBA, you are obviously you think you have a much better chance of succeeding in 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 starting a business. As long as you got the stomach for it. Yeah. Let me ask you a, a question. Maybe it's it's not the politically correct question, which is to say that one of the reasons people get MBAs beyond hanging them on just, the walls I got all over them is it's to change no, jobs. I was going to say it was the network effect, right? Well, that's it, right. It, it, you're, but if you're an entrepreneur starting up a company, the right. ability to be able to call uh, 20, 30 people to say, I'm an alumni of, of, of right, this, right, right. Will, will you take my call, will you uh, invest help. in my company, all of those things, even though they may not even be skills but oriented. you wouldn't even have had to learn anything. And maybe it's an old boys network right. by default, and that's why I said it may be. Well, uh, all, all, all women, old. since they're about 50, 50 now. But, but, I'm, but I'm just suggesting it's a, it becomes as closed thing, and that seems no, less, but, but, but I think more, more importantly, at the fancy business schools, the, uh, the $300,000 investment, $200,000 right. from the job you missed, Plus the thing. That's a graceful way to get out of the first job you went to. That you hate. How, how many of them do go back to the same company? Not a high percentage. Some do. In our, in our school, we don't, get, we don't have a placement office. You come to our school to learn how to get in your own company, up the ranks, right. or start a business. So we teach you, we give you the tools to get your career launched. Like it's utilitarian rather than just We're sort growing. of networking and yeah, it's on right, the wall. Right, That's right. what I got out of it right. and I didn't know that. It's true. It's I mean, true. I thought about maybe I should do that if, I, if I'm starting something. I may it's start something. Like night. Yeah. yeah. But our student satisfaction Would I have to pay 66? Uh, can you? Can you 39,000. Do I have to pay 39,000? Give me the password so I can just get into those courses or something. No well, that, who's, well, well uh, who's that going to hurt? Do you, you, you want to try a course? I might. Let us know, and we'll, and we'll give you a deal. Do you have anything on, like, people skills? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of it. Two courses. You do? People management. I don't need that. Um, Jack, I think what's uh, kind no, of stunning, I, though, you said 40% growth a year. We were talking earlier about college, um, right. colleges right now, and I think admissions are down by 1.3%. Right. And MBAs are down even more. Mm -hmm. The facts are, if you survey, look, why is Amazon doing well? They have a high... And, and NPS score. NPS is a wonderful, simple me me measurement that tells you, would you recommend this school to others? Are you having a great experience? We are off the charts because our faculty is measured on their NPS with their class. I, I love that. In, instead of all these, you know, these, these guys that, that uh, what's the word there? They've got tenure, tenured, 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 I hate tenured, tenured blowhards that you're lucky to be able to pay them $200,000 to grace you with, you know, saying tenure you is one of the worst it's not sins for the, in right. the world. It's not for the students, it's for the faculty. It's for you're the right. faculty. Right. That's, that's funny. And, and this idea of freedom of speech is how you saw what's been happening to it. Tenure is. How many of those guys had successful businesses, the tenured professors? Uh. They, 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 uh, look, look, some of these schools are great. I'm, the, right, I, right, I, right. I'm not poo pooing the, the, the good schools, but they don't give you the tools if you're, and they cost you too much. People, right. it's unaffordable. All right, All right we're going to continue our conversations with Jack Welch. Squawk Box will be right back.